Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to vidIQ. And today we are talking about keyword research. Let's just jump into this and do this. vidIQ. vidIQ. vidIQ.com. It is so good to see all of you once again here at vidIQ. If you're not familiar with who we are, we have a YouTube t- channel and tool that educates you on your YouTube journey by helping you get more views in less time. And as always, today we are joined by our resident YouTube expert, our resident vidIQ senior evangelist, Jeremy Vest, poking the fingers as usual in the air, celebrating the fact that he has joined us here on the live stream. Hello, Jeremy. How are you this week? Doing very swell. Awesome. Getting ready for our big event next week. Yep. Uh, If we are not familiar with where we might be next week, we're going to be at Vid Summit, which is in exactly a week and a day's time. We're going to be representing there, doing channel audits for people live. But as usual, we'll be doing channel audits for you today. Uh, There is a form in the video description which helps us to manage those audits. So if you want to fill it out right now, you have your chance to get your channel audited today. I've already got eight channels lined up, but there's still room for a little more uh, today. If you just want to do some shout outs for the people joining us in the live stream today, hello to you, BK42 channel, uh, Blake Eddington, Fantastic Adventures, Karate Playbook, Cooking with Tovia, Neo Kirch Baby, Cool Tech, Peddling with Paul. I think I pronounced all of those usernames right. Over to you, Jeremy. Uh, the challenge is on. Can you get all of those usernames right as we say hello to our community today? Evan, Evan Carmichael in Spanish is on. Hey, Hi, Evan, Evan. Hello there. <laughs> we have, I um, can't pronounce that one. Alf, I can pronounce that. Mega Scorpion, Cool Tech, Digital Jedi Master. Leron, how's it going, Leron? Hey, Leron, hello to you. Uh, Also, hello to Doberman Guy, the best moderator in the world, bar none, uh, in the universe, in the whole of YouTube, not just the YouTube universe, but if you need a moderator for your content anywhere, uh, Doberman is probably, hopefully, available. I'm soliciting his services. I don't know if he's free to do that, but uh, he lives auditing our channel, so I'm sure he'd be able to do it for you as well. And uh, yeah, I'm just seeing that uh, Evan Carmichael is also here on his other uh, account as well. I I saw one, Evan Espanol, so hello to the uh, Spanish viewing audience here for Evan Carmichael. Anyway, uh, hello to all of you. Welcome to vidIQ. Today we are going to be talking about keyword research uh, before we jump into some channel audits. Uh, Jeremy has been doing a, quite a lot of investigation on this. So what we are going to do is share the screen here with Jeremy to help us guide us through what we're going to be talking about. And Jeremy, I assume you can see my screen right now. Please yep. confirm, sir. Yes, you can. So we'll just jump back to the first page. So keyword research, super important on YouTube. Why is that, Jeremy? Take it away. So one of the things I want to stress, I've seen a lot of people lately kind of start rejecting like this concept of keyword research and tags and titles. And a lot of people I've seen recently are just like kind of tired of it. They're just like, you know, go create videos. The the cream will rise to the top and everyone will win. And there's unicorns and fairies everywhere and and everyone's happy. Um, The problem with that philosophy is (laughs) when you're starting out, If people don't know what your channel is and you're not using terms that people are searching for, my question to you is how do you actually get found? You know, how do you build an audience and how do you answer questions people are already asking? How do you start your universe of being a YouTube creator if you're not using terms people are searching for, if you don't have an uh, already built in audience? You know, someone like Jake and Logan Paul, started, I believe on Disney and then Vine and, you know, they already had an audience. It's kind of like the snowball effect. You know, when you're making a snowball, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. If you have velocity and you're able to have an audience, keywords don't matter for people like Jake Long and Paul or, you know, PewDiePie or Dude Perfect. They don't have to put perfect trick shot jump in their tags and titles with 30 million plus subscribers. But there is a threshold of when you're starting out, you do have to understand the, in, I call this the keyword universe, the universe around terms and topics of what people are searching for and what's trending. 
So one of the easiest ways to start in this universe is to start by going to your search dialog box in YouTube and then just start typing a phrase. What's going to happen is you're going to see auto-populated results of in YouTube's I mind the most important, you know, thing that's showing up. So for example, in this case, how to make a cake, how to make a cake from scratch is the number two thing people are searching for um, of all of YouTube. So just doing these simple things and understanding the exact search of uh, intent, instead of making a cake, you know, um, making a cake with my mom on Wednesday <laughs> would be a typical YouTuber title. Um, if you used how to make a cake from scratch at home, um, you know, then you're going to probably match the intent of search that people are already looking for these type of videos. Um, so it's an easy concept. It's pretty simple. And keywords don't have to be in tags and titles and descriptions. Don't have to be this weird thing that people, I don't know why, maybe it's just difficult for most people, but it doesn't actually have to be that big of a deal. And the biggest thing I want to talk to you guys today about is I have this concept or we have this concept called root keywords. Essentially, you should know five to 20 terms to identify what your channel is about. Um, so Rob... What are five terms that the vidIQ channel is about? So if we were to think about vidIQ and generally the YouTube growth topic, it would be keywords along the lines of how to get more views, how to get more YouTube views, how to get more subscribers, how to grow your YouTube channel, how to, let's see, how, how, to, in, how to rank tags higher, how to write better titles. I was kind of going a little bit off topic on that last one, but yeah, those would be the generally the keywords that I would be thinking about. And, and the, what I wanted to demonstrate there, guys, is you should know your universe. So you start by showing the, you know, what people are searching for um, and then what auto publics on YouTube. Rob, go to the next slide, sure. please. And then this is where one of my favorite parts of, of vidIQ then what happens is we then display bigger parts of this universe. So on the right-hand side, after you type in your main phrase, like how to make a cake, the vidIQ um, plugin actually shows top, uh, well, related queries and top uh, searched keywords within those queries. So let's say you wanted to use the word step-by-step -step or amazing or, you know, you could really dive down into the universe of what people are searching for and match that with your passion. So I always say match your intent with match your passion with the search intent. So if you love making princess cakes, just understand the universe of what people are searching for on princess cakes and then your passion will follow through with whatever you love about, you know, princess cakes. So make sure that you match search intent with passion. All right, next slide. Um, for those of you that haven't used Boost, our, our paid uh, premium program or subscription rather, we show a lot of relevant keywords. So when you're typing, when you uploaded a video and you put in a couple of, I call these root keywords or tags, then our software is going to take over and we're going to give you tons and tons of more suggest suggestions for tags and titles um, and descriptions. Um, so you can see, you don't actually pick all of these, but you can start seeing your keyword universe a lot better. Next slide. I was just add here as well, Jeremy, that, that this helps emphasize uh, that keyword is more key phrases and like long tail keywords, three to four words that create a phrase that you should be thinking about. Here is obviously we, we've You've done a, a video on thumbnails, so it's uh, riffing almost with the, with the keyword of thumbnails, like how to make custom thumbnails, how to make thumbnails for YouTube videos. So it's reinforcing, as as you said already, the, the root keyword, and then playing off that with different keywords that you can possibly use there. And a lot of people are starting to say that tags don't matter anymore. Yep. And we find that not true, you know, from our, our research, but we will say that we believe the title, the title structure, the descriptions, 
playlist names, things like that are still extremely important. Yeah. So even if you're not necessarily using our research for just tags, you could still use it for descriptions and titles and all the other meta information that's really important. All right. If you want to go down to the next slide. This one, use your yeah. broad term. Yep. So for those of you who have heard me talk before, I'm a big believer of these root keywords. Um, so YouTube video ideas is actually huge, uh, right? It's a big search term. It's people search for this every single day on YouTube, a lot of people. So let's say you're making a video about YouTube video ideas. I would actually make 10 or 20, right? So if you want to rank very well for a term, my suggestion is to make a series. So this, the whole point of, of what we're talking about here is getting to root keywords and series of videos around a term. So imagine you wanted to rank number one in the world for YouTube video ideas. What you don't do is you don't make one video and expect to be number one on search, right, Rob? Uh, yes, um, unless there's uh, like mitigating factors such as it's a relatively new search term, like a trending event, and you're one of the right. first. If it's, as you say, like a well-established keyword and you're trying to break into it, then, yeah, reinforcing that keyword with a consistent number of videos is certainly the way forward. And I'll give you an example. So within usually around 7 to 72 hours after you upload a video, we call this the honeymoon phase, or I call this the honeymoon phase. And YouTube gives you a little bit higher priority in from suggested to search. You just rank a little higher because obviously if YouTube didn't do that, all the older videos would you know, keep on dominating. So based on your velocity of that video and the timing of the video, imagine if you did two or three videos a week on YouTube video ideas. What's gonna end up happening is 365 days a year, you 24 hours a day, you're going to rank slightly higher for YouTube video ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So all of the time, you're going to rank higher than a lot of your competitors for that one key phrase. So persistence, patience, and I guess punching that same uh, part of the YouTube algorithm uh, it's certainly a, a, an awesome strategy to, to, to look at. And I think you've got some examples here from our good friends at Video Influencers and how they've been able to uh, target a specific key phrase over and over again uh, to be able to dominate it. Absolutely. So how to get more views on YouTube. And then boom, boom, boom. You know, they just keep on going. So find your your root phrases. Make series of videos around those root phrases like how to get more views on YouTube and your the probability of you doing better long term is a lot greater than just doing one or two or three videos on one subject. Yeah, so we can see it here with a, a playlist from video influencers, at least nine videos, all containing the, the keyword how to get more views and then the specific topic of a video and then reinforced here in the playlist, the video tags, the titles, the descriptions, you call it quad keywords. I've called it the grand slam of uh, metadata in the past. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's, it's, it's trying to give YouTube almost like big... Imagine if you're communicating with YouTube in, with, a, with a big fl flashlight and you're doing these SOS messages to them and it, the, the brighter it is and the more clear it is, the better YouTube will be able to get your content and then serve it to the right audience. And this isn't some like... You know, a lot of people back in traditional SEO have this philosophy and idea that keyword research is some kind of voodoo, right? Mm, yeah. So, so this isn't. This is just matching your passion of what you love to do and how you love to help people or entertain them and match that with the intent of search that people are already doing. And it's just a fine, awesome, you know, good, good vibe going. So you got, um, you got your passion. You got what people are searching for. And, you know, a, a lot of people also on the flip side of this, they, they hate clickbait, right? Well, my suggestion is find a reason besides just putting the keyword phrase that people are searching for, find a way to also give them a reason to click. Now, if it delivers, it's not clickbait. 
So you wouldn't believe these three ways to get rid of a hangover. If those three ways really work, it's not clickbait, right? So yeah. if you deliver a message, it's not clickbait. You have to give someone what the video is about, but you also have to give them a reason to click. I'm not encouraging clickbait. What I'm saying is you have to give someone a reason to actually click on your video. Yeah, I I, I guess if you could almost a uh, um associate this back to like uh, big movie titles and and things like a, a, a movie title has to entice an audience to go and watch it like avengers infinity wars i don't know like, like how how does that relate to a, a, an audience without being very um thematical and fantasy driven and like would you ever call a movie clickbait it's like it's only the sort of thing that you use in you in the YouTube universe, which so I think it has a sometimes has a bad rep for for that. I agree. T- and, that and, kind you of know, headlines on newspapers yeah. and the uh, you know all of these these magazines for the last hundred years. This is not a new concept of getting you know giving someone a reason to click on something or watch something. This is a very you know two hundred year plus old f- tactic, and basically you know, the more crazy something is that content's probably going to win long-term, you know, if people watch it because people don't want boring. So here's a question, folks. Do you think Star Wars was a clickbait movie? Ridiculous question, but that's just what's coming to my head. I would say Star Wars 2 Attack of the Clones was totally clickbait because it was one of the worst films I've ever seen. Uh, but that's obviously a subjective opinion. Do we have any more slides here, Jeremy? I can't remember. Let's have a quick um, look. No, no we're, we're that's, done. That's it. That's the end of our uh, keyword research uh, introduction. Uh, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video on this hopefully next week, so do uh, stick around here on vidIQ to watch that. But I'm just going to bring Jeremy back into screen here uh, because, folks, coming up very soon are uh, some channel audits for you that we're very much looking forward to jumping into. Any questions that we have there in the comments? We're just looking as we uh, uh, check yeah, here. Yeah, just looking. Yeah. We've got uh, 113 people in the live stream right now, so thank you very much for joining uh, vidIQ uh, today. Um, I hope you found the keyword research uh, advice useful there. Anything coming up, Jeremy? Or um, yeah, I yeah. mean, we have a lot, a lot here. First off, I'd like to just say it's really cool to see these 40 or 50, 60 people every week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the, we car, the, the core super fans there. Yeah, we got to come up with a vidIQ super fan. Uh, yeah, I, I've thought about this I thought about this before, but it's, I think that's almost something that the, the community needs to think up of rather than me because I'll just end up saying something really stupid that's to do with, I don't know, our vidIQ, vidIQ students because we are trying yeah, to educate. That was users. pretty dumb. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, folks, if you can think up of a good vidIQers, I don't know if that really works. Um but like, yeah, if you can come up with something in the uh, in the community here, folks, we'd really much appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, good to see the core audience there. Uh, I don't think there's any general questions coming up on keyword research, so we think we've uh, given you everything you need to know on that topic. So are you ready, everybody, for some channel audits? I'm guessing the answer is yes. So let's do this. All right, then, another quick click on the screen to make sure that Jeremy can see what I'm looking at. Can you see my screen, Jeremy? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay, so the first channel I wanted to look at here was a fishing channel. And what I always like about um, particular YouTube channels that are in a traditional form of uh, interest, like it's not a gaming channel, it's not a technology channel or a vlogging channel, something that's almost been created by the YouTube universe. It's a fishing channel, which has taken a, as I say, this traditional pastime into the modern area, using it on social media, on a video platform. 7,000 subscribers, so already a channel which has some momentum. And when I look at the, the videos themselves, they're seems like a fairly healthy audience here views in a thousand which seems very strong then we start to look at maybe some of the youtube things that we can improve i'm seeing some maybe fonts that don't necessarily translate well into smaller thumbnails uh, and then is there anything that we can do with the titles here something like it we've been talking about keyword research is there a specific keyword that this channel can use what are your general thoughts here on this uh channel jeremy honestly I would not use text on these thumbnails. Yeah, I would okay. Bring the the like when you're doing selfies with the fish you catch. I would bring their heads closer to yours. Yep. 
And so, for example, the very top left thumbnail there. This one here. This is yeah. a near perfect thumbnail yeah. if you and the fish were zoomed about 60%. And mm -hmm. that's like would cover the whole frame is your face yeah. and fish. And then you obviously some water, you see some clouds in the background. And then you actually go in and you color saturate 30 to 40 percent more. You sharpen and crisp it, make that thing crispy as you can so that when you're um, when you're on the right hand side, it just looks so powerful because it's so colorful and the fish is right there in the face and there's action and excitement. And as someone who's a fisherman, I, I will say I don't actually catch anything, but I do like to be on the water with the fishing pole. Um, I would find it a lot more exciting and, and, and more clickable to catch like a, an action picture of you fishing versus text. Text means nothing. Also on this text that you have, it's actually very small and yeah. maybe because I'm old, I can't actually read it at yeah. all. Anything that we could maybe do with the titles here? Because I'm, I'm looking at the titles and sometimes I see fishing, but it's not necessarily the first. And we're not front loading that in the title. And then sometimes it's more of a descriptive storytelling title. Uh, do we think that there could be some maybe some improvements there as well? Yeah, I mean, if you wouldn't mind in search right now, just do how yeah. to fish for Ano or Wahoo. Rob is tired. How to fish. Sorry, what was that? For like O-N-O. -O. Boom. See, so this first title, if you could go back real quick. Um, yeah. Would actually be something like how to fish for Ano in Hawaii or, or wherever you were, because that's actually what people are searching for. Yeah. So including that, if we're going to try and develop a series on this, I don't know. And maybe if you caught mahi mahi. I would make that a different video, right? Because people aren't, you know. Um, for all I know, it's the same fish. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> but you get my point. Yeah. I, I also I would give it a reason to click something like, uh, you know, something like s super fun catching. You know, a super fun fish to catch or whatever. You know, you just need to find a, a reason to click and what people are searching for. All right, uh, and then last thing I was just looking at here was the channel banner. Um, I don't know. I I don't think this tells me enough about. It tells me what the channel's about, broadly speaking. Actually, I thought it was an aquarium channel. Yeah, first. yeah. So it was a little maybe the it's the 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 banner is not necessarily misleading, but just not optimized correctly for your channel and value proposition. A picture of you fishing or ha holding a big fish yeah, with the logo small and a value statement that says something like, you know, the what the channel's about, yeah, you know, f offshore fishing um, so you can get a better bite. I don't know. I don't know what, <laughs> what it is, right? But you just need to give people a very quick snippet of what the channel is about and why it exists so they can, within three or four seconds, make a determination if they care about you or not. Yeah. But other than that, uh, Shaka, I, as I say, a channel with 7,000 subscribers and healthy view counts on the majority of your videos. I think yeah, the content's probably exceptional. Maybe some optimization could be done uh, just be before the, the person clicks. Uh, by the way, if anybody thinks that Jeremy is frozen or broken, he's, he's not broken. I just have to switch because I share my screen to Jeremy. I can't then share his webcam. So that's why sometimes you get a freeze frame of his face, but it is a beautiful one, as you can see. All right, next channel we are looking at is a, as Jeremy has alluded to, we love uh, the repeat visitors to our live streams. And I know Digital Jedi Master is in so many of our live streams that I thought it would be good to take a look at your channel. Uh, I love the channel name, uh, Digital Jedi Master. Uh, 225 subscribers. Uh, then I look at some of the thumbnails and titles and we can see that you are definitely somebody who likes to uh, cover content in the, the fantasy superhero genre. Uh, the question I might start to be asking as a visitor to your channel is, hmm, what is your channel actually about? I can see React videos. I can see a first look at a Captain Marvel and then 
Super Bowl commercials. So maybe a little confusing in in the content and maybe the thumbnails need some consistency as well from my point of view. Anything that you could add there, Jeremy? Yeah, I've just a couple of things. The thumbnails are good, but because they don't look similar to each other, no one would know it was your thumbnails. Yeah. Also, you are using, it seems to be using copyrighted material on your thumbnails. That's actually against the terms of service. You could get in trouble for that. Um, if you click on one of these videos, if you're using even a second or two or three of audio or visuals, um, you could get copyright claims against your videos. Um, so try to find a way to do this that doesn't fundamentally get you in trouble or get you banned from YouTube for using copyrighted materials. Interesting question. I just want to ask you there, Jeremy, because somebody was uh, speaking to me uh, outside of a live stream about uh, thumbnails. Of course, they are, they still do have copyright on them, but th how would how would somebody report a copyrighted thumbnail just out of interest? Because um, I, I don't know, but basically YouTube is has seemed to be cracking down a lot more on um, actually p getting in trouble or getting a strike for a misuse of thumbnail guidelines. So I've seen a lot, you know, for if it's not what the video is about, I've seen um, if you're, you're trying to stuff, you know, some type of message or brand, into a thumbnail i i can tell you that they are looking at you know all visuals and mm -hmm. i've i've been contacted recently in the last few weeks by a lot of people that claim to have got strikes from thumbnails okay i don't know if these are valid or not i really don't know yeah i just switched uh, jedi master's videos to the most popular one see if we can find a, a theme on what potentially your most popular ones. But it's good ones. practice not to use stuff that's not yours. Okay. You know, always think the long-term game here. Yeah. Okay. So Jedi Reacts videos seem to be the most popular ones. When that Can was... you click on one? Yeah, let's check on this one. Okay. Just turn that down a little bit. I never get to do these. So they well, may not have any copyrighted problems. You know, they may not be showing anything. So it looks as if they have it down at the bottom here. Okay. <laughs> it's musical. All right. It's musical, all right. Okay, so what looks to be a fairly standard form of a reaction style channel. Um, yeah, it's always a tricky one, that one, isn't it? Where you have to then start to think about the fair use of content. And YouTube has actually done a, um, a very useful um, page on this very recently. So if you do search for YouTube fair use, they've got some examples of what is fair use uh, in terms of a channel. Uh, if we move away from uh, copyright, though, is there any... Uh, are we thinking of anything that needs to be changed here in terms of... Uh, the way the channel is presented to the viewer as well, Jeremy. I like I like the the art of the banner. Like it's cool that you guys made a you know a two D illustration. I think it's yeah. Really cool. Um, but it doesn't really to me reflect you guys. So right. at the end of the day, the reason people are going to watch your reactions versus anyone else's is because you guys are humans. So I would actually put your faces up there, you know, with silly YouTuber faces, reaction faces. Um, and actually get people to know you more. Because uh, at the end of the day, people are going to watch this and subscribe to this channel for you. And as I understand it from what we've briefly seen, it was, there's two people in the, uh, who who are on this channel, but from ve just from checking the channel banner of a channel logo, it's it's one person who runs the show. So yeah, as, you, as you're saying, making sure that the, the heroes of the channel are front and centre. Yeah. Um, what else could we say then? Uh, other than uh, this is a quite a saturated genre, uh, trying to do reaction videos to trailers. Um, he says uh, he actually says in the comments here that he he's doing well with copyright. He he'll make a claim and okay. they'll usually accept my fair use rationale. Okay. So cool, that's great. Awesome, that's great. So 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 did I? Uh, it's good to know Digital Jedi Massive that you're aware of fair use. 
and you're using it appropriately. So, uh, yeah, uh, I guess anybody who is thinking about using um, copyrighted content for fair use may want to use Digital Jedi Master as a, as a template for how to use it appropriately. And a lot of people, for some reason, don't think if you make something smaller or different that YouTube's system won't, won't won't catch it but it will it, it will now yeah i do remember when you used to be able to change the pitch of the music yeah and you could get away with it but uh youtube's getting more savvy and savvy and i think as you say jeremy if you're trying to use underhand tactics to grow your channel it's a short-term game and in the long run you you will be found out and to build a channel on on such a thing is probably not a great strategy all right. Um, so, any last thoughts about Digital Jedi Master? We got a, a bit entangled in a copyright. I do want to give Jedi Master some no, fair, would, fair feedback. I would just, I would just say fundamentally, if you could find a series of mm. videos, I think you'll do better. Yeah. All right. And so, uh, good luck there, Digital Jedi Master. Next channel we are looking at is Nin Nin Gaming Nintendo Switch gameplays, new videos every day. Uh, looks like you've hidden your subscriber accounts, uh, so I'll have to just have a look at the channel. Okay, so welcome to YouTube, first of all. You uh, started in August, and you're still a small channel, about to crack 300 views, so congratulations on that. And so we have to give some perspective here and say, fantastic, Ninden Gaming, that you've already got a channel banner, you're already exp experimenting with thumbnails, you've already pumped out... Oh, about 25 videos here. So I think there's a lot uh, of positive things that we can see here, uh, Jeremy. Uh, what, what could we say maybe that are the next steps for improvement for this channel? Yeah, I mean, great job. I, I like the thumbnails. You're using Let's Play, um, you know, at the beginning and when what video that you're Let's Playing with. So you're getting it. You you know, you've actually came a, quite a long way in just a few months. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have the basic concepts down of titling. You um, understand the concepts of game, you know, thumbnails. Uh, the only thing I would say is if you look at every other gameplay, let's play videos out there in thumbnails, I think you just have to make it uniquely yourself. So I would probably put your picture on there or find some type of way for someone. If, if I, if I compared to this to the, all the other let's play super Mario, you know, thumbnails out there, I'm guessing it would be very similar. Hmm. So I would find a way to be more unique, be yourself. And I think unique within each thumbnail as well, because this is almost like too extreme to want to the opposite end. We talk about branding consistency. So that people recognize your thumbnails, but Looking at this, it's almost like thumbnail wallpaper. It it just all blends together. Yeah, and I, it took me. We've been looking at this channel for a few minutes now, and I just noticed that the only real difference on most of these is like nine, ten, yeah. eleven, and I didn't even see that for several minutes. Um, so it's funny. I, I think this might be the first time we have too much consistency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think uh, as some good things here, though, that uh, the, the video creator has stuck to their guns with this topic of Let's Play Super Mario Odyssey, so trying to reinforce that keyword over and over again. But we can't just to part 12, 13, 14. There needs to be a unique incentive for the viewer to click on each one, whether that's something that, went, that, that occurred in a particular episode or a particular part of a game. Um, I just think... Again, thinking to viewers' um, energy levels, I, I guess, and viewing habits. When they see, if they visit Ninin Gaming for the first time and see, let's play Super Mario Odyssey Part 13, is there an expectation that I need to watch the previous 12 episodes to understand where I am in the series? So each, I think having a, as we say, having a series is brilliant, but then making each episode very different helps as well. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're not making content for search engines or AI robots. You're making it for humans. Yeah. So the human experience of people watching you Let's Play is a lot more important than everything else, right? So the content's first, and then the intent of search and you know having people find you and good thumbnails and all of that is actually past the first thing, you know. So. You got to reflect that in your tags and titles and 
or your titles and your thumbnails and your descriptions, you just have to be more human. Yeah. But uh, welcome to vidIQ. Uh, not vidIQ. Welcome to YouTube. But of course, welcome to vidIQ as well. Uh, Nin Nin Gaming. And yeah, as we say, a lot of a lot of good foundations in place. I think anybody who's a, a month into their YouTube journey may want to take a, a definite look at this channel in terms of how they've set up their uh, their their homepage and things because I think there's some good things going on there. Next channel is J Kumar Official. 102 subscribers. I'm struggling a little bit to read the channel banner here, but it's Leg Shuffle Tutorials. We just have to watch one of these videos. I don't know. <laughs> what I'm on not earth is a leg shuffle? Uh, let's choose. Uh, let's do how to do a simple ground swipe. 25 seconds. Let's watch the whole thing. Whoa. All right, go do that, Rob. On camera. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there we are. There, there's a foot in camera. Yeah. It's, it's a little difficult to do uh, as I'm sat down. Okay, so it's some sort of break dancing type uh, move for a channel which looks as if it's tutorials. Uh, where do we... I guess where do we start with this? I think... Uh, we need to look at how to make this more tutorial. And I think how to would be certainly something that we need to see a lot of in titles. And Yeah, I, I just think it's, it's really simple. I would just make the thumbnails more about the dance and, you know, have a lot more close up so you can actually see. Like maybe you have like... Um, a I was, collage style where you see the legs and you also see the someone dancing, you know, just, yeah. I would just make it a lot more. I would go look at type in like, um, hip hop dancing and dancing. And, um, Got, this is going to be an interesting, yeah. uh, little venture. Rob and YouTube. I know all about this stuff. So three simple dance moves for blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, just looking at some of these thumbnails, you can see some of these are pretty amazing that you mm -hmm. really understand what is happening in these thumbnails very quickly. Especially this one here, Jeremy. Look, um, this, we'll be watching this one after. How to, how to <laughs> hip roll, sexy dance moves. You can join us at Vid, I, Vid Summit to see us um, trying out that. That was actually me on camera. Yeah, just, and, and how to twerk. Uh, dance moves. Yeah, uh, this is another reason why I have a freeze frame of Jeremy because right now <laughs> he is jamming out. Um, hey, can you go to the? F oh yeah. So, so anyways, uh, the the biggest thing is I would say is the thumbnails and the titles need to be more of what people are searching for, and you could easily see just from the you know how to hip hop dance. Um, there are tons of videos, billions of views on this subject. It is very hot. There's a, there's a lot of people trying to learn how to dance. Um, I'm afraid that like shuffling and things like that aren't actually the words people are using. So I would figure out your keyword uh, universe, replay this, you know, the beginning of this video and make sure you really understand how to figure out your keyword universe and then go make series of videos. So instead of just, how to do a simple ground swipe, I would have this part of a series like yeah. um, how to hip hop dance shuffle and then, you know, the name of the shuffle or whatever it is. I don't even know what I'm talking about. No, neither do I. I I'm just doing a quick uh, alphabet search of leg shuffle to see what's coming up. And there are there are some such as tutorials. So, yeah, I think this is a good example right here, this video. With wow, eight million views, but a close up of a stance. Yeah. Yeah, those seem to be the good ones. And then tutorial or instructional or how to definitely in the title. And how uh, to shuffle definitely. seems like what yeah. I would do, you know. <laughs> how to shuffle. Yeah, it seems yeah. to be plenty, plenty of options there. So, um, Jay Kumar official, I think. <laughs> how do we. More emphasis on legs. <laughs> It might, might be the uh, general description there uh, for your channel banner, your thumbnails, your your titles. Um, your audience wants to see more legs. I know that sounds really creepy, um, but in context, hopefully that does make some sense. 
uh, to you. So that's J Kumar official. Uh, next channel is D Man. Am I right with that? D Man Zone. Two hundred and fifty-seven subscribers. Uh, very quickly looking at the thumbnails, this looks to be a. Uh, video game channel specifically on Fortnite. We have at least one of those uh, every live stream, so this is the one. Seen some great examples of thumbnails here for a small channel. Uh, seen some healthy view counts. I think specifically now what I'm looking at here, Jeremy, is the use of the keyword. For example, in this one here, last win of season five, that only has 33 views. But Fortnite Clan Recruiting 2018 has 200 views and Fortnite Loot Lake Island has 600 views. So there's a big discrepancy here in view counts. And could that possibly be through the use of keywords in the titles? Rob, do you want to give the example we recently did on the channel about uh, one of our users, our vidIQ users? Yeah, so uh, there was a channel called uh, Marcy Linios. Let me uh, just bring that up here. If I can remember how to spell his name. Here we go. He's got 18,000 subscribers now. Let me just quickly scroll down to about three months ago when he didn't really have any um, channel focus. It was all different things like prank videos and how to set up all Snapchat and uh, breaking an iPhone 7. And then he decided to do a video on how to improve the performance of Fortnite. Very specific, improving frames per second. That video, as you can see, went from 300 views on average to 30,000 views in that particular video. And then you watch the rest of his content ever since then. And it's all on a very specific keyword, a very specific topic on Fortnite. And look at the view counts, 16,000, 5,000, 17,000, 14,000. And the channels, uh, I think, gained around about 15,000 subscribers in the last two or three months. And all, obviously awesome thumbnails to go along with that as well. So it... There was a, a probably a stroke of luck in finding a video that really took off, but then the video creator doubled down on that. And I can see here, but going back to D Man Zone, you've got a couple of exa examples of videos that have performed slightly better than others with 500 views. So you found something interesting in loot on Lake Island. Could you do a potential follow up to that video? Uh, that's what I would certainly be looking at um, for this channel. Um, anything else there, Jeremy? That you yeah, I, I think finding your sub niche. Yeah, sub niche, a, brilliant, brilliant way yeah, of looking with, at it. Within a, a game, right? So find your exact thing. For example, one of the Sean Canal, one of the people that teach others how to do YouTube very well, he has, I guess, between both channels, almost a million subscribers. So he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, he ranks number one in the world for a custom thumbnail, and he's done several custom thumbnail videos, but he also ranks number one in the world for a million other things because he's done these series. Yeah. He's, he's, um, he, he really does well with um, best cameras to use as well, certainly. So, so I think if you look at anything for Canon cameras, Sean Cannell always appears because he's always reinforcing that keyword. And has done so maybe, it's about series, right? Yeah. So what are you going to do for Fortnite that no one else has done? Are you going to entertain people better than others? Or are you going to talk to them about a specific thing you know that other people are struggling with? Find yourself providing value or entertainment or you're just another person making videos you know um pewdiepie is just probably a little more interesting than most of the other people in the world um a little more crazy and high-pitched and annoying wait <laughs> did i say that out loud sorry <laughs> so just try to find your voice your value your messaging you know that that is especially for something like fortnite we love that, you know, vidIQ users are definitely listening and learning and growing their channels like crazy. It's really amazing to see um, people going from like 100 subscribers to 100,000. It's it's really a cool thing. And, and all of them have one thing in common is that they focused, they made awesome thumbnails, and they focused, <laughs> and then they refocused, and they put out content every week. So the headline there, folks, is... J. 
Jeremy Vest thinks PewDiePie is annoying. Um, we'll make sure he sees this video Absolutely. and um, see if we can get, uh, get any fame hacking boost from that. All right, we're going to do the question of the week right now. Uh, let's do this. All right. So I had an interesting question come in from uh, VidIQ this week. Uh, we we scour the um, conversation that's going on, not only in the live stream, of course, but also uh, on VidIQ. And the question that came in this week comes from a gentleman by the name of uh, Milan Singh. And I always encourage people, uh, I always encourage video creators to get people to uh, to ask questions in videos. And then when you respond to the comments, you have the person, you maybe ask a question in a comment, but this raises an interesting, I guess, al algorithmic question. So when we as a channel reply to a comment, then the person who has a comment clicks on the video to reply back. Every time he replies, he doesn't necessarily watch the video. So do you th think this affects watch time on your videos because the person leaves your video as soon as he posts a comment. So essentially the word is, are you setting yourself up for an algorithmic dent because you're generating a conversation in chat, but then when people respond to that, they're not watching the video and you lose watch time. Man, this is like, which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Yeah. Okay. yeah I say, fundamentally, if people are on your video asking questions, this is a winner's problem. Yeah. Like, you know, forget like if we know the answer to this or not, and just understand that you've captured someone's attention enough on, in another country, in another state, in another region, and they are watching your video and, and interacting with you with a comment. I think it's phenomenal. And, and, you know, personally, I mean, the video is playing, right? So I don't think watch time is going to be affected. Now, if you completely answer their question and they leave, you've done your job. If that means you've been harmed to do your job, that's fine. Because think about it this way. When they have another question about the thing you do, they're probably going to come back to you because yeah. of the loyalty they have for you because you've built an actual relationship with them. Damn, you stole my point from me there, Jeremy. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Yeah, you're building trust. You're building loyalty. As Jeremy has already said here, we've got like 50 to 60 hardcore vidIQers who are joining every time in these live streams because they value us and trust us, which we uh, appreciate very much. So, yeah, I think, again, don't try and think too much as a robot. If you are generating a conversation, if you are uh, building trust with an audience and they are taking time out of their day to respond to your comments, that is probably more valuable than maybe a little bit of watch time you may lose because of that. So I think a good question there, Milan. And uh, yeah, I think we've managed to negotiate that uh, pretty well there, Jeremy. What we are going to do right now is take a short break so that I can line up some more channels for you to audit, uh, for us to audit. And then we're going to take your questions live here on vidIQ. So we will see you in around about two minutes. Jeremy, if you talk, people will be able to hear it. So uh, you might want to just uh, keep quiet as we are in the break. Otherwise, see you in a couple of minutes.
this episode. Right, folks, the good news is that I have remembered to turn on my microphone this time, so I'm not going to just uh, have a silence for two or three minutes. And I do apologize uh, for essentially telling Jeremy to shut up for two minutes there. It's almost like he was back in school. Uh, I do apologize for that. So just one of these really weird technical things in live stream that there's so many variables going on. And if Jeremy talks, you can hear him. But if I turn my, I can't turn his microphone off. Um, but and then we can't talk to each other. So uh, some of the um, behind the scenes of VidIQ there. I'm looking at the live stream, and I think we only lost two or three uh, viewers there. So a uh, few. I think the break does work for everybody. Thank you very much for joining us once again, uh, Jeremy. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Are you ready to do some more live stream channel audits? He's raising his hands. I think that means yes. So let's just jump straight back into this uh, with our wonderful transition. Which allows me to share my screen. Jeremy, can you see what's on screen right now? Yep. Yeah, I, I want, I'm going to let you take us through this channel as, um, so I'll maybe contribute, but I want you, I'll, let's um, see how you would introduce this uh, in a channel audit. All right. Can I do the 60 second version? <laughs> 20 second version. 20 second version. All right, you ready? Yeah, here we All go. right. Missy Moo, I do not know what you do. So I don't know what this channel is about. Click on the videos tab for me. Sure. All right. Now I see that it is it seems to be a channel about dolls playing. Can you click up uh click on one of the videos? Yes. In today's episode. Bailey and Brianna are babysitting the young. For those girls. of you that don't know this, Bailey doll playing channels are insanely popular. This she- seems like so, um, the similar to the ASMR um, sort of topic of uh, YouTube, where you may think if you're not familiar with the topic, it seems a little weird and strange. But I'm sure that it's a very safe area for 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 a YouTube audience. It looks to be certainly this vi- these videos as well, and with the size of a channel. Yeah, uh, and and you know, there's a lot of things that you've never experienced before, like ASMR, and you know, a lot of these kids' channels. If you have like a three year old daughter that plays dolls, you probably have seen you know some yeah. of these channels. Um, so I will say that the thumbnails are very good. the The text is probably not needed at all. I'm guessing. I don't know what age your viewers are, but I'm guessing they can't even read. Right. So I wouldn't even have text on your thumbnails at all. You seem to be doing a very good job with Baby Alive Potty Training. Actually, do me a favor. Mm. Click on the first video, Baby Alive Potty Training. Yeah. I want to see how well she's doing with ranking because she seems to be doing the philosophy. Um, So, okay. 
So baby alive potty training, you don't seem to be ranking, but you're doing really well as far as the philosophy. Um, so yeah, keep it up. I mean, just keep on making these videos. I think, um, you know, you have a lot of, you know, relative to the amount of subscribers and stuff you have, you have a lot of views, 11 million views. Yeah. Um, you seem like, you know what you're doing? The titles are good. The thumbnails are very good. Um, I would change the banner to, to more of, you know, dolls playing. Th that's the thing, isn't it? I don't understand how the, the channel banner relates to the, the, the thumbnails and the content. It, right. They seem like completely different things at the moment. I mean, if, if the channel is called Missing Moo and you use that in, in the content, brilliant. But how can we get the Missing Moo name to associate more with what we see in the thumbnails? I think definitely. Yeah, just show a picture of yeah. of dolls playing. Yeah, you know that's what I would show in the banner. Yeah, and but, uh, uh, very well done. Good, great, great channel. Hello to a fellow uh, British Columbian. Uh, I'm in Vancouver, so um, uh, just looking forward to the weather turning horrible very soon. But congratulations, Missy Moo, on your near thirty thousand subscribers. Congratulations to you when you hit that target. And yeah, I think as Jeremy says, y y you're getting, you've got a very healthy series of videos running. And uh, maybe just some thumbnail tweaks to um, appeal to that audience. I think I read in the description that the video is uh, kid and family friendly. So the question is, do you even need the text in there? Can maybe emojis and the dolls themselves tell a, a better story uh, in each thumbnail? Next channel we are looking at is Casual Pro. We Hold on. Uh, Castleberry. Okay. We've got says, a question here. Missy Moo. Missy Moo dolls and you so hey. that's a great that's a phenomenal you know tagline for you what uh, an awesome value proposition that is yeah great job castleberry thank you very much there for the advice really good stuff casual pro then uh seven and a half thousand subscribers uh join uh kapa Kap can anybody pronounce that kapami i'm gonna yeah. I'm going to yeah. suggest that is. Uh, it looks like this might be some sort of prank style channel, just from a guess from the, the channel banner, and that you ordered the entire McDonald's menu. Impressive work. Um, new Can intro. Can you go back to the home real quick? Yeah. yeah I'm sure. sorry. You're fine. Right there. Just the banner. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. So what happens right now when we're looking at this banner is he has a lot of nonverbal communication going on. He has personality. He's got style, I guess. I don't know, if you <laughs> know about that. He's got the good design in his banner and you know, it is, it, it works, right? Like it mm. seems like that's a dude you wanted like, Hey, who is that guy? Is he doing something cool or not? So I just want to stress the importance of nonverbal communication and excitement, eyes, emotion, engagement, the way you're able to grab someone's attention and have them come look at your channel is extremely important. And I would say he's the winner of the day as far as banners go. Awesome. Um, all right. And so we, we, we I, I see this as maybe some sort of prank channel and i always feel as if we prank channels it's a um a win or bust you either have a video that does very well or a video that just you, you put the same amount of time energy and thought into and it just doesn't go anywhere uh so are there any general pieces of advice for a channel like this i mean i'm looking at it and it seems to be that the the more successful videos were gaming and fortnite ones but i would say the channel's departed from that now and is in very much a, a different genre. So any general tips there, Jeremy, for such a channel? I mean, look, it looks like you're going for trends, like you're, yeah. you know, you're fame hacking the world, right? Mm. And uh, you're going for more of a shareable slash viral approach than gaming. My honest opinion about this is just go for it. Okay. Get, get yep. stupider have more emotionally based thumbnails where they're more crazy, um, have more color in your thumbnails. You know what? You're going here. Crank it up 30 more percent. F crank it up 50 more percent. See what happens. Um, you order the entire McDonald's menu. Maybe you, you should have added something and dot, dot, dot. 
Oh, yeah. With a tease and intrigue of a title. Very good. Because you just made a statement to me. You didn't give me a reason to click. Yeah. So I like where you're headed. You know, I honestly, I think uh, there's only so many people that can do Fortnite videos unless you have a specific, you know, way to do them better or different or more unique. Um, so, I mean, there's obviously a lot of people that have done very successful shareable viral content. I would make sure that you're wrapping that intrigue in there. And then I would up your thumbnail game a little bit. Um, and I, who knows? An another thing I would do is I was make sure you're off platform of YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Because I this type of shareable content is, doesn't work as well on, you know, on YouTube that it might on another platform. I think uh, th thumbnails is a good point, Jeremy. I think there's a, there are some thumbnails here which, which are good, but then there are others which um, probably leave a lot of room for improvement, like this one, for example, where we, we talk a lot about a focus on the face and being really be able to see what's going on in a thumbnail. And as you can see there with my magnifier off, you can't really tell what's going on at all in this thumbnail. And uh, you're looking at potentially a trending topic in the month of October, which is brilliant, but the thumbnails really need to tell a, a, a super so strong story, uh, especially in that one, I think. VC Production says, get stupider. Get stupider. 2018. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. So, so another, um, that, maybe that should be the, the tagline for your channel, Jer Jeremy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just get, get stupider. <laughs> get stupider. All right, so Casual Pro, uh, I, I think just going back to uh, some fundamental things, I, there's a lot of prank channels out there, uh, and the fact that you've already established a, a solid community of 7,000 subscribers is is awesome. And, and I would just say, if you are going to get crazier and stupider, just do it within uh, uh, the laws of whichever country you reside in. All right. <laughs> That's that's the uh, PC Wilson uh, uh, there, just um, making wow. sure that everybody YouTube's responsibly uh, in this day and age. Next channel, Gillian Rouge or Rogue. Uh, you have 682 subscribers. Congratulations on your channel that looks to be along the lines of maybe something a little creepy, something a little bit to do with ghosts and horror. It's, it's parodies. Perfect. Which is even better. Perfect. People making yeah. fun of people that do ghost stuff. Perfect right. time for you, then, the month of October. Um, and some really good thumbnails here, like we were talking about the other channel, maybe that we sometimes couldn't see the reaction on the person's face, but this one is a complete opposite. Uh, the star of a show is in all of the thumbnails, really strong imagery there. Maybe sometimes a little bit too much text, which is sometimes a little distracting, maybe, for example, on this tattoo one. Uh, there's, I don't know where to focus my eyes on on that one, maybe, but um, yeah. If, if imagine, imagine if the face was forty percent bigger and yeah. you could really see the tattoos. The tattoos, yeah. And then say, two words: um, bad tattoo? Question mark. Yes. It would be so much more clickable. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So just scrolling down the channel a bit, a bit. Okay, so. Evolution of thumbnails, though, here that we can see improving significantly versus what you were doing uh, a year or two ago, which is good to see. And I do think, by the way, you have like a solid B plus thumbnail strategy. Yeah. Like you're, you're, it's very good. Just get those faces even bigger, slow down the text a little bit, and I th and you know just pump up those colors as much as you can. So the next question I would ask is, as I'm reading through this, is what is the focus of the channel? Because I see some videos about being scammed at uh, TanaCon, and then one's about tattoo, and then one's about ghost hunting. It's another viral video channel. This is another shareable, in the moment, thing, yeah. hacking, um, riding the wave of hip hop and social, you know, what's happening in the world. This is, this is a fine strategy. You have to get to the wave a little faster than the rest of the people, though. So as you start seeing trends developing, you really need to be on those trends first. A, a good example of this is Rob saw the new hashtags happening, and um, we made uh, two videos on vidIQ about hashtags, and we ranked number one and two in the world for 
you know, YouTube hashtags right now, 60,000 organic views. And the reason, the only reason we got that is we were first. Yeah, we, I remember we were having a, a meeting at the time and we just saw a tweet saying on a news article that hashtags were available and within two or three hours, uh, I'll try to get that video out as quickly as possible. So uh, just uh, talking about then Gillian Rouge or Rogue, I apologize if I'm pronouncing your uh, username wrong. Would focusing on paranormal conspiracy stories, horror things over the month of October, would that be a good idea for keyword um, intent over the next 30 days, I guess? Absolutely. Yeah. It, would, it would all be Halloween and scares and, you know, all that. There's just tons of, of things people type in, you know, pranks and there's just all kinds of things happening in the month of, of October. Yep. All right. Uh, we are now an hour and five minutes in. I just want to say to the hundred plus people who are still in this live stream, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to join this live stream. We're going to try and get through as many channels as we can here. So we're going to up the pace a little bit. Next channel we are looking at is Fish Visions. We're actually looking at two fishing channels in one week. It's a bit of a rarity that. Uh, I, I love the Apple. I'm sure this is an Apple desktop. I seem to remember uh, the Nemo one. Uh, certainly in the past. Anyway, Fish Visions. Well, what can we say about this channel, Jeremy? It looks to be about DIY, uh, breeding, raising, taking care of fish. Yeah, I, I think I think you kind of just nailed it. Like it took me 30-ish seconds to know what this video is about. Um, I didn't know if he was fishing because instant bass on a dollar lure or, you know, or if he's building ponds. So it took me a minute to, to figure out the, you know, what the video is about. If you'll do me a favor in another tab, I would yes, love for sir. you to type in um, how to make a fish pond. Okay. In home or in the backyard, click on one of those. All right. Okay. So one thing I would do is I would definitely search these type of terms, how to make a fish bone at home, at home or, you know, wherever and uh, see what other people are doing. See, look at the, the number one, two and three results. Look at their thumbnails, mm -hmm. the DIY, DIY fish pond with an arrow. It's very strong thumbnail, very, very strong thumbnail. Now go back to his channel real quick. And that's how I want you to study what your competitors are doing and to grow. I want you to look to see what's the best. Don't copy them, but make your own versions of why you think their thumbnails are getting more clicks or why you think, you know, the, the titles themselves may be more um, approachable for people, you know, or, or, or discoverable rather. Um, Rob, what do you think? I would say that the thing that's uh, sticking out to me is rethink your tech strategy because I don't know if you need the text. The text that you, you use is far too small. It's random. Like this this one here, fish finished rocking in my dream pond. Does that need any text? Maybe. I don't know. That's a, that's a, a bit of a sub -quest, subjective question out to the community. I think an arrow would maybe just uh, suffice there. Uh but yeah, the, the thumbnails are developing here. They've, they've gone from, um, let's see, before they, they had you in the thumbnail sometimes, but then maybe they had somewhat dirty colors. But then I like the last three thumbnails here, but I think the text is, this. I think that the video creator may be afraid of ditching text. And I think that needs to be done on, on these thumbnails. Awesome. All right, so that is uh, fish visions, um, but I will just I'll, I'll, we'll just finish on this good news. Your channel seems to be healthy, three hundred subscribers, but you're getting views. You're getting like fifty percent plus view rates versus subscribe rates, and that's always to me a sign of a, a channel that's relatively healthy. Next channel, the luxury hybrid. Three and a half thousand subscribers. Immediately, the channel banner says to me that it is about uh, makeup and beauty. But then some of the video titles suggest that there's some um, 
vlogging elements in there as well with a trip to London. And if I just look at these thumbnails, I'm just sort of standing back and looking at the 15 thumbnails I can see on screen here. There seems to be a certain amount of busyness going on. Again, with text and sometimes montage clips. And my eyes can never really focus on anything. So if I, if I, I was saying the first thing that probably needs to be improved on this channel is a specific focus on a specific subject within the thumbnails. Do you agree, Jeremy Vest? Absolutely. Do me yeah. a favor and type in kiss press on nails. Kiss, what was that? Kiss press on. Yeah. Oh, yep, first first result. Right. Here we go. There so, we go. There we go. Yeah. These thumbnails are number one, two, and three for a reason. They're phenomenal. They're focused. Even the first one with the YouTuber reaction face. They show thumbnails, and it's very, very clear what this is about. Now go back to her channel real quick. Yep. So the difference, like, for example, on the how to apply kiss um, press on nails, the second this line. This one, hey. Yeah. So just it, hopefully this is self-explanatory. Go back to the other tab real quick. Sorry, I'm making you run around. You're making me navigate so much here, Jeremy. Okay, that one. There we go. Boom. You yeah. see that? This is what we're talking about. So my suggestion, if you're doing a beauty or a travel channel, is if you really want to do multiple things, you can, but you definitely need series. I would make a hundred plus videos on press, press on nails or acrylic nails um, or how to whatever DIY nails. I would focus whether it's eyeliner or makeup or, or whatever it is i would focus and thumbnails and beauty are a billion times more important yeah. than even any other channel that i've ever worked with we i've done the 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 youtube strategy for several you know fortune 50 uh, beauty companies and it's unbelievably important how the thumbnails are everything it really is but also the strategy of making series of videos is is extremely important as well. And I would just add, I think the last thing to say about this particular thumbnail is people usually want to see the payoff of uh, what's inside the video, don't they? So you have a before and the after in the product itself. If you were to take one of these images, probably the most valuable one to the potential viewer is what am I going to get from this video? And the after image would be the one. Is that right, Jeremy? Yeah, 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 but also just the way the hands are placed and, yeah. you know, the before and after can work, but I would remove the kiss box altogether. Yeah. All right, so that, that is uh, the Luxury Hybrid. Again, congratulations on, on your... Uh, I think awesome. for, for a channel, uh, I mean, sometimes we, 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 we just focus on what you need to improve, but I, I then again, I step back and say, I think any channel that's in a such a saturated market, such as Fortnite, gaming, family vlogging, or beauty to have more than a thousand subscribers already indicates that you are doing 70 to 80 percent of the things right but that next 20 percent to then start to become a, a breakthrough channel uh, is probably the the ones where you really have to think more intelligently about these things like thumbnails and, and such next channel oh another fishing channel uh south bay bass what could we maybe quickly say about this channel? Let's have a look. I don't know why, but it's gone to the old YouTube layout here. Uh, We're like dominated by fishing channels. I like yeah. this. It's awesome. The, the fishing crew has moved in. Good, good, it's good, good that we can catch all of these channels. You can tell that joke to the bank, everybody. I, I actually really like your thumbnails. I would just try to make the fish bigger and yep. then even make the saturation and color and sharpness of your thumbnails even bigger um i am curious maybe confused on the title strategy because essentially i could see it going either way uh, like for example double bass hookup on the whatever rat whatever it's a really good title because as you know I've never got two basses at one time. You know, that sounds really cool. Mm. But then again, I know people aren't necessarily searching for double bass hookups, right? Right. So right. I think that you do a phenomenal job with intrigue on your title, but maybe you should spend a little more time with the, 
you know, discoverability, what people are searching for. Yep. So I'm seeing some, uh, what, what is BBZ? Is that like a very specific piece yeah, of equipment? Yeah, it's a very or? specific uh, topwater bait or something like that. Okay, so, so I can see that being referenced in a lot of the titles, which to me seems like a, a good approach if you want to really double down on a specific con- well, what's mis- concept. What's missing, though, is like topwater bait. Right. Right. So if you type in like top water, yeah, bait or for bass or, you know, there's, right. there's all kinds of people searching that. Right. Okay. People don't typically search for a specific top water bait. Okay. So I would include top water bait, the, what the name of it, you know what I mean? I would include the whole thing. All right. Okay. So that is uh, our second segment of channel audits. I'm just going to bring Jeremy back into screen now, hopefully. And what we're going to do is that part of a show where we invite you, the audience, to get involved here. We're going to do uh, any question answered, which leads us on to this awesome transition. Uh, Jeremy, if you just want to flex your uh, muscles. <laughs> what, what, what is flex it? There we go. Look at him. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about here. I was thinking of flex your brain because we're going to get asked some really tough questions here. Uh, All right, it's Ask Us Anything. Uh, Folks, if you have any question you have about YouTube or your channel, then fire it in now, and we will try and answer these as best we can. Um, So are are we seeing any here? That It sounds as if people want to make fishing channels because that's been most popular today. All right, which... My face does move. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. Sorry, We've now got the uh, animated version. This is this is not CGI, folks. This is the real uh, Jeremy Vest. All right, questions coming in. Uh, which All is right. more important, daily two-minute videos or 10-minute videos twice a week? My answer to that would be it always depends on the channel. The fact that you're, if you could produce two 10-minute videos a week is awesome. Daily videos, depends what sort of content you're doing and how you can get your audience into a, a viewing pattern. Your thoughts, Jeremy? It also depends on how competitive your field is if it's super competitive like fortnite i would actually do 10 to 10 minute videos but if it's not that competitive it may actually make sense to show up faster more daily all right so okay good this is this is a good pace that i want here uh the question here was can youtube just hate you who was that one from uh i've seems to have disappeared now i don't know where that was jeremy have you got a question yeah, so um, what is the best way to go about determining a channel strategy or which direction to go? My thoughts there is match your passion with what people are searching for, passion plus search intent. So figure out what you want to do, which I, I actually know this guy, which is skateboarding for old people, which is right up my alley. And match that with what people are searching for, like how to ollie. So in my opinion, I would do 50% of your content in how to's, and then I would do 50% of your content in shareable, cool videos of old dude skating, gripping it up, looking really cool. Um, but the way I got there is I understand the universe of keywords around skateboarding and skateboarding old. And then I was able to determine, um, basically, you know, what people search for. So, Step one is to understand what you're passionate about and how you can give back to the world, whether that's entertaining or education. Step two is to understand the keyword universe within that passion. And then step three is to execute like no one else. Samuel Samuel Durham. I just want to do a quick shout out to him. Uh, I have been, I check the comments every single day and he is be, he's going through our entire vidIQ video catalog, like every single live stream, every single video. And he asks a question every single day and I try my best to answer him. His question in this live stream is, is it good to put my credentials on the channel banner to establish my credibility to stand out against my competition? I think my answer would be is if you are part of your YouTube content and videos, definitely include you as the hero, the protagonist, and yeah, the uh, value proposition of some kind. Jeremy has also said, though, that we were looking at that channel earlier on, Casual Pro, that there are some visual um, cues that can really sell your channel. Uh, Anything else to add there, Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, I, I have YouTube certified on my channel. You know, yeah. because I want p- 
people to know that I'm not just a dude in the basement. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. Jeremy's caught me out there. <laughs> just imagine him now in a in his in his basement, not, not never been let out. Uh just 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 sat there waiting for to do live streams every Tuesday. So Shaka Fishing has actually asked this question many, many times and I haven't had okay. a chance to fit to answer it. So how can you gauge the monetary value of your content when approached by a brand looking for a content marketing? The short answer is you can't. <laughs> there is something called, uh, what is it? Social blue, blue book? social book or something. Yeah, social yeah, book. Social yeah. blue com that can help you essentially here. It's supply and demand. You know, it's, it's a 200 year old business model. If people are interested when you're first starting out and you're under, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 subscribers, I would say get what you can take. <laughs> I mean, honestly, a um, couple of ways that personally I like to work with smaller YouTubers is on commission. So if I'm selling something, I would like to basically give them a big piece of that sell, maybe 20 or 30% of the sell. Another way to get started with brand deals is, uh, Rob, how in the world did you get your job here? Uh, so, what we, uh, you mean with vidIQ? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I was a, a YouTuber just doing my own thing. And then I, I was doing a tutorial and I decided that I wanted to do a, a one about comment filters. I sent out a tweet and I included vidIQ in that tweet. And within 24 hours, uh, our our boss here was in contact with me and saying, do you want to do some more work for vidIQ? And like, it's just developed from there. I think that was, what, two and a half years ago now. And I started working for vidIQ a year after the first, do my first video. So yeah, it was a, a long, a long process, but a, a very enjoyable one. And here we are now. So my, the moral of the story is if you build relationships yeah. and not deals, then you're going to win long term. So when you're at 100,000 subscribers, you know, a lot of these fishing companies are going to approach you like crazy. But those ones that were with you in the beginning, they're probably going to mean more than the rest. So I, for example, know probably 60 to 70 percent personally of everyone within my industry that could potentially be a sponsor or you know a partner for vidIQ right um and and obviously everyone at vidIQ both robs everyone we we know this industry because we care about it and we could go approach almost any of the owners of of this industry and and talk shop because you know this is our this is our universe. This is what we do. And we want to make sure we know everyone, even our competitors. We know them all by name. So my going back to you about brand deals is I would honestly, as you're starting out, I would build relationships. I'd have open conversations with them and, you know, maybe even start do one or two for free. So you can show the brand what it looks like, maybe do some affiliate model stuff so you can give them more trust, you know, in you. But ultimately, it's like the chicken or egg. You just got to start somewhere and then build yourself up. Joshua asks, how many days uh, till you are approved? I assume this is a question of monetization. Uh, generally speaking, you should be monetized within, I'd say, 10 days to a few weeks if there are no issues from YouTube side. If you are put into YouTube review, I'm afraid the answer is anyone's guess. And just, but just try and thinking it from YouTube's point of view. And we did a live stream on this on Friday about YouTube has a stakeholder to answer to, and that's advertisers. And if advertisers are uncomfortable with content that YouTube finds on your channel, then y there is a responsibility from YouTube to ensure that advertisers' videos and advertisers' content is not appearing on video that's not appropriate for them. So. If you're doing something that you think is maybe not safe, uh, then I'm afraid you need to maybe address that by looking at the community guidelines and the policies and cleaning up that content. Now, I know there's thousands of channels with, with very specific 
issues with this or situations and unfortunately we just can't look at every uh, channel on that so fingers crossed that your channel is monetized but if it isn't and you're waiting for two or three months the chances are youtube's found something wrong with it and you may need to clean up we've got another video on that coming out on thursday by the way so do stay tuned for that any other questions there jeremy yeah so um Let's see here. We already answered several of these. Um, I've seen advice that when should make when we make playlists with our videos. Um, yeah, I don't know what that means. Sorry. Yes, make playlists and uh, make sure that they are they have search intent in them. Don't just use a playlists as a place to dump videos. These are searchable, and you should be thinking of how to maximize the title and the description of those playlists. That's a generic so Rick, answer. Ricky is about to move to Thailand and he's wondering if he's going to have any glitches, you know, being a YouTuber in Asia. Ricky, one of our dear friends, Nick Nimmin, you definitely need to check out Nick Nimmin. He lives there and uh, he is a cool dude. I bet if you reach out to him, he will get show you the ropes. I moved my UK YouTube channel to Canada and I didn't, suffer any issues with like changing of a localization or anything uh, i think it's just make sure that you're still posting the videos at a time appropriate to your audience so maybe if you're if you move to thailand but your audience is in america you may need to start posting your videos at 1 a.m in the morning so just maybe think about that from a youtube perspective and jillian started off making wrestling videos just uh yeah. letting you know because she there saw all your props in the background yeah. Talk about talk about all your belts in the background. There, Do right? I really have to? Okay, so <laughs> so folks, here's a story, right? I have. We only have like two minutes, by the way. I have an interest in wrestling, going back to as a kid when I first started watching it. And I have an interest in nostalgic wrestling. I don't watch wrestling anymore, but I watch all of the old stuff on the WWE Network. So like SummerSlam 91 and the British Bulldog and the Ultimate Warrior. And people are dropping off this live stream as I speak <laughs> uh, uh, about this. But yeah, now that I have a little bit of disposable income, I can now buy ridiculous WWF or WWE trinkets and I've decided to display them on my uh, channel because of actually what some uh, what um, Pat Flynn said he said be uniquely you in other words don't be afraid to um, share your personal interests on your YouTube channels because then people are interested in you as a person and this is a perfect demonstration of it so somebody's actually interested in uh, the stuff that I have in the background I'm also interested in badminton football and also other things I'm not just a wrestling fan but yeah that's a the, the two minute answer to why I have these titles behind me and I was actually joking in um, in our chat on vidIQ that I um, we were thinking of what you could call YouTube wrestling pay-per-view. So one I had was um, Subscriber Slam, and another one was um, Sub for Sub Mania, and another one was um, Hell in a YouTube Algorithm Cell. So if you do have any more ideas in the chat, do let me know. I can see Jeremy is just shutting down at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there we are. Uh, it, look, get, somebody asked, asked Jeremy about his um, pastimes, and we'll be love to talk about that in the next episode of the VidIQ <laughs> live streams. Just be you. That's, what <laughs> That's it. Got, yeah, just... I have skateboards in the background. He has wrestling. Um, we have a question. There are so many videos without tags and millions of views. What's up with that? Look, don't get too caught up in this. The reality is if you have subscribers and you have a fan and you have a base, you know, Mark Cuban can tweet anything he wants yeah. and people are going to respond because he has an audience to talk to. If you have two subscribers and you don't use keywords or tags or any descriptions um, that people are searching for, good luck. Like, how are you going to, how are you going to get there? Right. Yeah. So don't get too caught up in this. The reality is you are correct. There are billions and billions of views happening every day with people not using tag styles and descriptions correctly. Totally agree with you. But as you're building your audience, how do you get there? That's my question. Yeah, I would say even if YouTube says that um, tags are not used that much anymore, as a smaller channel trying to establish yourself, any marginal gain when you're a smaller channel is worth doing and it it, sh it represents to you that 
all right, maybe you're using the tags and they are as important, but to get to those tags, you've done the keyword research to be able to use that in an effective title and an effective description. So like tags are like the, the tail end of all of that research you've done to make your uh, content as discoverable as possible. Anything else there that we can see? Small timers trying to, but small timers trying to make a viral video look, am I wrong? That was Castleberry. I'm not sure what your question was there. He's just saying like going viral with the small YouTube channel is hard. Yeah. The only thing I'll say about that, Mr. Castleberry, is on YouTube it is, but on yeah. other platforms, it doesn't have to be. There's a lot of distribution strategies you can use to get it out there. So, for example, King of Random, 10 million subscribers, shared one of my videos a few months ago. I'm a small channel but that's a big distribution platform. So there's a million ways that you can be smart and you can have a whole distribution plat strategy for whether it's on Reddit. If you get on a subreddit that's really hot and active, you could get a million views. You know, it, it could happen very quickly. So there are a lot of outside the box critical thinking, you know, outside of the box thinking techniques you can use and I've used before. One video we did, uh, I did back about, I helped with the strategy on about five years ago, four years ago, had over 50 million views. And it's because it was published in uh, upworthy.com, which is a magazine. And then from there, it got published about 6,000 more times. And the entire strategy, the reason it went viral is it had nothing to do with the size of the channel. It had to do with the size of the distribution. Boom. Last question here from uh, Digital Jedi Master. How useful are channel tags? I've never heard of an effective way to use them. My answer would be, I don't think they have any use whatsoever anymore. I might be wrong. Jeremy may disagree with me, uh, but I think this is a legacy of old information on YouTube that's not used anymore. Uh, I think uh, our good friend Leron actually did a test um, with channel tags and it seemed to make no difference. Any counter argument there, Jeremy? I still use them because I don't know the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I yeah, mean, mate, put some in and yeah, but, but we don't think there's uh, any use to channel tags. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your Tuesday live stream for this week. Uh, I've had a blast uh, just having some fun here. Jeremy, I hope you've had the same. I hope you've learned a little bit about wrestling. Uh, we'll <laughs> learn a lot more about skateboarding next. Actually, no, I need to reverse that because next week, uh, there will definitely not be a live stream at this time uh, because I will be on a plane heading to LA. We may try and fit some sort of live stream into next week at Vid Summit, uh, but we'll probably announce that next week once we're there. It just leads me to say, Jeremy Vest, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time here on the live stream. I do apologize if we didn't have a chance to audit your channel this week. I think I saw 60 submissions coming this week. We try our best to audit as many as we can. And uh, I try not to repeat any audits from uh, previous weeks. So um, if you are on the list, we'll try and look at yours next week. Uh, sorry, not next week, whenever we are next on. Uh, if you enjoyed this live stream, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want more content just like this, we don't just do live streams. We do content at least three times a week. Subscribe to vidIQ. Uh, that's all of the usual vid, uh, YouTube pleasantries out of the way. It just leaves me to say, enjoy the rest of your video making day. And we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.